In the heart of America's dark and foreboding woods, I, a 33-year-old truck driver, often found myself cruising through the desolate roads on late-night drives. The solitude of those nocturnal journeys was broken by the presence of my good friend, Jason, a divorced man with no kids who often accompanied me to keep me company during these lonely drives. One chilly night as the moon hung low in the sky, we were driving through a particularly dense forest, laughing and cracking jokes to chase away the eerie atmosphere. Jason had consumed more beer than he should have, and his alcohol-induced bravery prompted him to request a stop for a bathroom break. Hey, man, pull over, Jason slurred, pointing towards the looming trees. I gotta go pee. It's too late to find a proper restroom. I hesitated, aware of the potential dangers that lurked in the dark forest. Jason, are you sure about this? It's not safe. You could get lost out there. But his judgment was clouded by the alcohol, and he brushed off my concerns, insisting that he'd be fine. Reluctantly, I pulled the truck over to the side of the road, watching as Jason stumbled out into the darkness. As I waited inside the truck, minutes stretched into an eternity. Worried, I called out to him, Jason, are you okay? Silence. No reply. Anxiety gripped my heart, and I grabbed the flashlight from the glove compartment. After about ten minutes, I decided to venture into the woods to check on my friend. My footsteps echoed eerily in the dense forest as I called out his name again and again, the darkness swallowing my voice. With each passing moment, the feeling of unease grew stronger. The forest seemed to come alive with a sinister presence, and the trees whispered hauntingly in the cold wind. Panic set in as I frantically searched for any sign of Jason. And then I saw it, a pale, lifeless body lying on the forest floor. My heart sank and I rushed to his side, praying that he was still alive. But the life had already left his eyes, leaving behind an emptiness that sent shivers down my spine. Tears blurred my vision as I pulled out my phone and dialed 911. I could hardly speak as I described the tragic scene that lay before me. The body of my dear friend, Jason, taken away from this world so suddenly and inexplicably. The police arrived and they conducted a thorough investigation. But to our bewilderment, there was not a single clue, not even a trace of what could have caused Jason's death. No footprints, no signs of struggle, no evidence of any creature or external force. The mystery surrounding Jason's death weighed heavily on my mind, haunting my thoughts day and night. I couldn't escape the image of his lifeless body, nor the haunting feeling that something malevolent lingered in those woods. Haunted by the unanswered questions, I found myself unable to return to my late-night drives through the forest. The woods that once brought me solace now terrified me, and I couldn't bear the thought of losing another friend to that eerie darkness. As the days turned into weeks, the investigation yielded no answers. Jason's death remained an unsolvable enigma, a chilling reminder of the unknown and inexplicable horrors that could exist in the shadows. To this day, I can't shake off the feeling that something otherworldly took my friend that night. Was it a malevolent spirit that dwelled in those woods, or a vengeful force disturbed by our presence? I may never know the truth, but I am forever scarred by the inexplicable tragedy that unfolded in those haunting woods. And with each passing night as the darkness descends, I can't help but feel the presence of something watching, waiting, and lurking just beyond the edge of my vision. In the heart of the countryside stood Hollowbrook Estate, an imposing mansion with a dark and twisted past. In 1978, William Holloway, a wealthy entrepreneur, purchased the property with the intention of restoring it to its former grandeur. Little did he know that the mansion came with a sinister history and a haunting reputation. As William, his wife Elizabeth, and their two children, James and Isabella, moved into the estate, they were filled with excitement and anticipation. The grandeur of the mansion overshadowed the rumors of hauntings and restless spirits that had circulated among the locals for generations. The first few nights were peaceful, with the family relishing in the elegant interiors and the vast estate surrounding the mansion. However, as the days passed, strange occurrences began to unfold. Late at night, the halls would echo with inexplicable footsteps, and doors would slam shut without any logical explanation. 
James and Isabella started complaining about feeling a constant chill in their rooms, even during the sweltering summer nights. They would wake up to find their toys moved around or stacked in strange patterns, as if placed by unseen hands. One evening, as Elizabeth was reading a book in the drawing room, she noticed a fleeting shadow passing by. She dismissed it as a trick of the light until she heard the faint sound of a woman's laughter echoing through the mansion. Elizabeth called out to William, thinking it was one of the children playing a prank, but they were nowhere to be found. As the weeks went by, the family's unease grew. Isabella began having recurrent nightmares, waking up in terror, unable to recall the details of her dreams. She claimed to have seen a pale figure lurking in her room, whispering dreadful secrets. One stormy night as the rain poured outside, the family huddled together in the living room for comfort. Suddenly the power went out, plunging the mansion into darkness. Panic set in as they heard faint whispers and distant cries echoing through the halls. In an attempt to understand and rid themselves of the malevolent presence, the Holloway family sought the help of paranormal investigators and psychics. They spent days analyzing every inch of the mansion, hoping to uncover the truth behind the haunting. The investigators captured eerie EVPs, voices of the unknown spirits speaking through the recording devices. One chilling recording revealed a woman's voice repeatedly saying, Stay away, sending shivers down the spines of those who heard it. The psychic made contact with a spirit named Eleanor, who claimed to have lived in the mansion in the 1800s. She revealed a dark tale of betrayal, lost love, and a tragic end, suggesting that her restless spirit might be the cause of the hauntings. Despite these revelations, the investigators could not find a way to appease the tormented spirits. The paranormal activity intensified, with the apparitions becoming more frequent and the atmosphere growing heavier with dread. The Holloway family's fear and exhaustion reached a breaking point, and they made a difficult decision to leave the estate behind. They sold the property and moved far away, hoping to leave the sinister past behind them. Years later, the legend of Hollowbrook Estate continued to echo through the countryside. The mansion remained abandoned, and locals believed that the spirits of the past still haunted the premises. To this day, Hollowbrook Estate stands as a haunting reminder of the unexplained and the chilling mysteries that can lurk in the shadows. The unsolved paranormal case of the haunting of Hollowbrook Estate remains a chilling tale, cautioning those who dare to cross the line between the living and the dead. This happened when I was 17 years old. It was a chilly autumn evening and my youth group was coming to an end for the night. My friend, a film student at the arts high school we both attended, needed to film something for her class. The pastor's wife, who was in charge of our youth group at the time, kindly agreed to let us use the back of the old Baptist church, which had been standing for over a century, to film our project. The church had many unused areas, especially at the back part of the sanctuary, which served mainly as storage space. To reach our filming location, we had to go through the back of the sanctuary and pass through a narrow hallway with wooden panels all around. It was dimly lit and the old atmosphere gave a haunting vibe. We set up the camera and lights and began filming. After a few takes, my friend and I switched positions so that we could have two actors saying the lines. As we were in the middle of the scene, my friend decided to improvise and added three knocks on the wall to create a dramatic effect. I teased him for it, but we had to redo the shot since it wasn't in the script. Just as we were preparing to redo the scene, to our surprise, we heard those exact three knocks again, and this time it wasn't any of us, including my friend. We stood there in silence, trying to figure out where the sound came from. I tried to rationalize it, suggesting that it might be the old pipes or something similar, but before we could continue, it happened again. Tap, tap, tap. The knocks turned into tapping sounds, and this time there was no mistaking it. It wasn't something mechanical, it was a deliberate rhythmic tapping coming from somewhere in the narrow hallway. Fear began to creep into our hearts and we knew we couldn't stay there any longer. We quickly gathered our equipment and left the back part of the sanctuary, not daring to look back. On our way home, my friend decided to review the photos and videos we had taken during the shoot. As he was going through them, he noticed something strange. In one of the photos, a faint glowing orb could be seen moving across the corner of the hallway. We were puzzled, 
but before we could dismiss it as a camera glitch, more orbs appeared in subsequent photos and videos. We couldn't believe our eyes. It was as if something supernatural had been there with us, playing tricks and trying to communicate. Whether it was a friendly spirit or something more sinister, we couldn't be sure. From that night on, the narrow hallway in the back of the old Baptist church became a place we avoided at all costs. The story spread among our youth group, and many were hesitant to enter that part of the sanctuary, especially after dark. The experience left us with an eerie feeling and a belief that there might be more to the world beyond what we could see with our eyes. To this day, I can't help but wonder what we encountered that night. Was it a ghost from the past, trapped in the confines of the old church, or was it something else, something beyond our understanding? I may never know for sure, but one thing's certain. That experience has stayed with me, a chilling reminder that some mysteries are best left unsolved.